top tier deck, and I'm sure he's going to play it masterfully. Absolutely. Let's see what these prize cards have for us. Looks like, you know, a double color synergy, but nothing too out of the ordinary here for Stefan. Now, Tron, on the other hand, has a Garboder, uh, but and a Buzzwell GX, but, you know, nothing too crazy. I think because you have multiple Garboder, uh, Garbotoxic Garboders, you're going to be okay. Yeah, the one Bridget that he plays is prized, so that's a little unfortunate for him. But honestly, in a matchup like this, when both players are playing Garboder and trying to shut off abilities, you, you kind of like seeing that in the prize cards, the, uh, right. the other Garboder. We saw a handshake, which means the game's about to begin. Tran wins starting things off here on the right uh, with a Trubbish against uh, Stefan's own Trubbish. But now we see Tran actually going for a uh, Tapu Lele. I believe this is where he's going to get the bad news of having his one bridge apprised. Uh, which is definitely unfortunate, but uh, he, uh, of course, more than likely has a, uh, a backup plan here. Yeah, he has a, another Ultra Ball in his hand, so he will be able to get a different Pokemon out. And if he chooses to grab a, a draw supporter like Cynthia or Sycamore, depending on how he values his resources, he could even go with N, honestly, if he wanted to. Uh, it looks like he has some options of cards he could discard, like the other uh, Garboder, if he's deciding to go with more aggressive approach uh, directly into these Zoroks. I think when you see a Trubbish on your opponent's side of the field, if you don't know what Stefan's playing, you can kind of start to, to guesstimate that you're probably playing against some sort of like a Zorark uh, Garboder deck. There could be a chance that it's not a Zorark paired with it, but, you know, it, that seems unlikely. Um, so uh, I definitely like uh, uh, Tran kind of playing uh, a little bit more aggressively here, playing a double colorless energy onto his Tapu Lele, which Wonder tagged, and uh, now we see a Cynthia drawing Tran a brand new hand of six cards after shuffling his old hand back into a deck. Yeah, he had uh, he had Ultra Ball in his hand, and uh, he had a few other energies. He had his uh, Beast Energy, uh, Prism Star, if he wanted to go ahead and use that on a Buzzwool. But instead, he's actually going to play this double colorless energy, and I like that play from him. He knows that Stefan has a lot of ways to remove special energies, so... Uh, you could see that beast energy go away for the rest of the game so early as turn one. That's something that he just doesn't want to do. He wants to get some value out of it later. I completely agree. And now Tran discarding his mysterious treasure. Uh, looking through his deck for any psychic or dragon <laughs> Pokemon. Uh, and uh, <laughs> Good old dragon. Putting it in his hand. Does find a Trubbish. Yep, and that's the uh, the ideal Pokemon for him to grab here. Uh, honestly, you just want to have some Trubbish available so that eventually, if Stefan does go on an aggressive push and start using some items, you can fight back with Trash Lanch. All right, Tran does seem to be getting the ideal setup, uh, but does pass after finally completing his turn. Stefan now plays a Bridget immediately from his hand, of course, being the Zorark deck, that's exactly what you want to see, and you prioritize your bridge way more than any other deck, which is why Stefan plays it in multiples. Yeah, we see him immediately grabbing a few Zerua, and he had some pretty awesome cards in his hand as well. He's holding on to a Tapu Lele GX, as well as a Kartana, so if he wanted to go ahead and slice off that DCE, he has that option available. All right, he is looking through his deck, looking for uh, potential pairs to the... Uh, to what's sure to be a double Zoru, uh, Zorua. He does have a Zorua in his hand, so he's not likely to go for a triple Zorua. He'll probably just find a Trubbish to go with uh, with these two Zoruas from the Bridget. Yeah. I mean, I, I wouldn't even be shocked if he just chose to take two. Uh, he's he's going to run out of bench space soon, but I guess this, if he, if you do see him grab the Trubbish, it means that he's fine with playing the N on the following turn and not using the Tapu Lele. He actually seems to be debating this quite a bit. Uh, he actually... Wow, okay, well, there's that. <laughs> yeah, Latios is not too bad. You have the psychic weakness to fight into the Trubbishes, get some early damage on them if you want to. You could also soften up a Tapu Lele so that eventually a Zork could come in with a Choice Band and knock out that Tapu Lele. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. And so, Hand Hammer, too. Yeah, so that we means do see the that double is still open. He doesn't have to use the Kartana. That's pretty sweet. Okay. Big time enhance hammer there from Stefan. Only one Trubbish in play, and it is his active Pokemon, though. Though I don't know how important that actually ends up being right now. You know, just looking at Trans list, he does have four Floatstone, so he right now is debating if he should even attach his energy for the turn. Uh, it doesn't seem really worth it because he doesn't want to attack with any of these Pokemon with a rainbow energy. So he, he might just go ahead and use the Sycamore and try to push for a Buzzwall. Yeah, he is playing his Sycamore 
uh, right after playing his uh, third Trubbish onto the field. So doesn't discard every card in his hand, but just about. And now he has a brand new hand of seven. These seven cards, oh man, they're a little rough. <laughs> yeah, this this isn't ideal, but he does have a double colorless energy and he wants to start getting some attacks off. He wants to put a little bit of pressure does over on Stefan's side. And he's holding the float uh, along with Fighting Fury Belt. Okay, so if he has a floatstone, he's because of that Fighting Fury Belt, um, he's got you know kind of a tanky attacker. But maybe he didn't have a floatstone, Kyle. No, I saw it. He's holding it. <laughs> he uh, he ju he just might be waiting for uh, a relevant attack and not just hitting for fifty, but to hit for seventy on the following turn. Sure, I can definitely see that. Stefan immediately just plays an end. Maybe he sniffed that uh, floatstone out. <laughs> he was thinking a little too much over there. Well, uh, this is actually pretty great for Stefan. He did not have any Zoroarks, and he's going to be looking to chain those together very soon. So any way to draw into those, well, like right top away. decking, would be sweet. <laughs> the very first card he found was a Zoroark, but it wasn't paired with anything, anything else to find additional ones. So he will have to trade and hope to hit another uh, way to hit a Zoroark, and it doesn't seem to be that way. No, nope, looks like, like he, he found Cartana and some more unit yeah. energies. So it... It seems like we're only going to see one trade out of him this turn, which obviously is just not exactly uh, what Zorak wants to be doing. It, it puts a lot of emphasis you know, emphasis onto um, drawing, uh, playing multiple Zoraks on, you know, as early as possible. So when it only gets one, it definitely seems to be lacking in power. Yep. Interesting to see Stefan going for the, the Tapu Lele now. A lot of players will be wondering, why are you going for that now? You're not going to get any value out of it. But actually, this plays around any potential Garbotoxin coming down on the other side from Tran. And he doesn't have a field blower in his hand. So we wanted to make sure he definitely has a supporter for the following turn. All right. Tran now. Obviously hasn't been getting any aggression going himself as we see just a whole lot of psychic Pokemon in a you know mostly fighting deck. This this well, is the big turn. He's he's got Garbotoxin available to him. He's got the Floatstone, and and now it's really just up to him if he uh, wants to make a push at any of these Pokemon with a Guzma, or if he wants to search his deck out a little more with some draw cards. He does have that one Garbotoxin in the prize cards. So he, he can pull out the second one here. You're right that this is definitely going to have to be a, a really big turn here for Tran. And it seems to be that way. Um, now Tran obviously finds his Garbotox and Garboder. What else will he, uh, will he find with that? Oh. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, he's... He's making some decisions here. He's got the Buzzwall. He's got the strong energy. So right now he's already got knockout on, on Azurua if he chooses to go with that. And uh, wow, look at that. Actually going to make the push right now. Okay. It's aggressive, but I like it. He has the Floatstone on his Garboder, so all abilities are shut off. No more trading for the time being from Stefan. Will we see... I think Some he aggression. found what he was looking for. He uh, he found two parallel city, and that's a great way to fight against this deck. Oh yeah, look at uh, look at the resources step on lost immediately just from the parallel city alone. That's just a whole lot of disruption, man. I mean, uh, not only do you have Garboters, Garbotox, and stopping your uh, your trades, but you're also limited on your bench space from uh from parallel city you're you had to discard a zorua because of that parallel city yeah i was a little worried when uh tran decided to go with the sycamore over the guzma it seemed like he had an easy prize knockout on the zorua and he'd obviously have a supporter for the following turn with that sycamore but he actually plays cards like pal pad and that means that he can just get that guzma back into his deck he's always going to have that available for him later on yeah pal pad's definitely one of the other unique choices uh for Tran in this deck. It's like like we said earlier, it's definitely a, a unique take on a couple of decks kind of being meshed together. Yeah, slow and steady can win the race, and it looks like he's he's content just hanging out right now. Looks like Garboder will be retreating, and here comes Tapu Lele, a uh, Pokemon that's been ready and raring to go for a couple of turns now, and it finally gets to be the active Pokemon and immediately takes 
Uh, takes no time dealing 50 damage onto the Trubbish on the active spot here for Stefan. As it's now Stefan's turn and a field blower gets rid of that Garbotoxin uh, right away as well as that Parallel City. Yeah, and I believe that was off the top because he decided to go for that Cynthia before even having field blower. And he, he ended up finding the exact car that he needed. That means he does have access to trade and he will be able, be able to use that Cartana and uh, get rid of some special energy cards if he wants as well. He seems to be eyeing that, uh, that option. That Cartana is great when it comes into play, but then it kind of does nothing for a while until hopefully uh, your, your final prize. All right, Cynthia draws six new cards here for Stefan. He has yet to trade too. So we will be seeing quite a few options here for Stefan before he's forced to pass the turn. And this is really such a chess match of a game because uh, Stefan is trying to draw prizes on an odd prize count. He doesn't want to uh, ever hit that four mark because he doesn't want to play right into Sledgehammer. And on the other side, Tran's just going to only give him the option of attacking into that Tapu Lele. And it's got 210 hit points now with that Fighting Fury Belt. It's going to be very difficult for him to work his way through that um, with the way that he's been drawing, with only finding these, these unit energies. Completely agree. Now remember, Trubbish does get to evolve. It's not just, you know, it's not just meant to be a Trubbish the entire game. And um, we can definitely start seeing some aggression out of Stefan here. And sure enough, look at that. Garbo door in play. Yep, both players are going to keep track of those dice for us so that we can see how many well, items looks like there there's, are. Looks like there's four items in Tran's discard pile. Yep, and then Stefan on the other side, he's got to keep track of it too. <laughs> two, yeah, exactly. Looks like there's like three items for Stefan. Potentially four. Yeah, he's got three there. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's uh, that's actually pretty good for a Zoric player to only have three items in play by this this stage of the game. So just to make sure, so the yellow die is going to represent Stefan's items, right? Yep. And uh, the purple one or blue one is going to represent Trans. Yep. Okay. They're keeping track of each other. <laughs> I like it. All right, so um, Parallel City, once again, Field Blower got rid of one, but here comes another. Now, here's the other tough spot. Do you discard the Latios with the uh, energy attached to it? Looks like you do. Yeah, and he had that unit energy on there so that he could potentially just go double colorless 140 into a Buzzwool, and that option is gone now. He actually needs a few more cards. He's going to need to find a unit energy and another Trash Alanche to be able to get through a Buzzwool uh, on the following turn if this trash lance were to fall. We see Stefan roll that pip of the die from four to five. Every time you play an item, you just, you have to worry about how much damage your opponent's going to be dealing to you. Of course, uh, once you get like three, or, you know, three to four, uh, four items in your discard pile, I'll take that back. Once you get three items in your discard pile, these trash lance garboters, you know, they start one-hit KOing each other. Yeah. So it's not like you need very many, but you do want to start being able to one-hit KO other Pokemon. Like, for example, a Zoroark. If you can get 10 items in your discard pile and a uh, choice band onto your Garbodor, you're going to be one-hit KOing a Zoroark, and that's that's pretty key. Yeah, that, that can definitely be huge if we see the Buzzwolves fall early to trash lance garboters. It just really depends on how these weaknesses stack up against each other. All right, a big Sycamore here for Tran. Looks like he has no way to get out of the active spot here. Yeah, it seems like he's uh, he's kind of stuck. Because of that Fighting Fury belt, he can't play that Float Stone in his hand. Yep, he does have the option to, to lock in abilities with Garbotoxin. He's got that Float Stone he could put on there if he wanted to. Just I think I would do that. Uh, you have uh, an opponent who has a couple of uh, Zoroarks in play. Why not, you know? Yeah, uh, it, it seems pretty reasonable. On the other side, Stefan is holding a, a field blower but he doesn't know that instead he goes with a uh, fighting fury belt by the way so he chooses to use the expendable item assuming his opponent likely you know still hasn't run out of field blowers and will more than likely play one soon otherwise obviously the game could could end otherwise so it's a very important play for stefan so he trans kind of just hedging his bets getting rid of a what is basically a useless uh tool for him instead of the potentially very important floatstone. Yeah, the only way that Garbodor would be uh, handled outside of a field blower would be with Guzma, and any turn that it's getting Guzma'd up, you'd have to believe that Stefan is trying to knock it out. 
So the, the Fighting Fury belt's pretty nice there. We've seen this before. Field blower gets rid of that parallel city and the uh, item attached to the Garboda. So Garbo talks in offline, trade online. And now it's pretty important how many items are in the discard pile. Six means 120. Looks like there's four now for, uh, for Stefan, too. 120 is 200 uh, total damage on the Lele. So he'd be one item short uh, if he were to do something like just, well, Trash Lance straight in or Ace Roll him, uh, play the new Trash Lance onto the Trubbish. Uh, am I missing something? Wouldn't he be able to win a KO the uh, Tapu Lele right now? Well, with the Fighting Fury belt, it's plus 40. Right. And his uh, 120 would be 200, and he's at two, 210, essentially. Okay. So yep. just a little You're right. short. You're but right. Field Blower could do that if you wanted to. My math is worse than yours. <laughs> 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 All right. Field Blower and uh, Unit Energy are the cards that are found with uh, Double Puzzle of Time. New Garboder coming down with that Unit Energy. Guzma brings up the Buzzwall. You can you cannot knock out the Tapu Lele, but you can knock out the Buzzwall. Yeah, and honestly, the Buzzwall's the biggest threat right now. Being able to knock this out, this also puts Tran in an awkward spot where he wants to continue to fight with a one-price attacker, but he doesn't have any right now. You could bring up his Trash Lance, but uh, it, he doesn't have the energy. Requ uh, actually, he's got that Rainbow Energy, so I, I think we know what he's going with. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's pretty much Tran's best option. I mean, let alone uh, only option, but he does uh, bring up the Garboder that's sure to, not, sure to get a floatstone attached to it. It's like like we said earlier, he kind of baited out the Fighting Fury belt before playing the real item that he hopes to stick. As uh, now there's two field blowers gone from Stefan, and he's got to be short if not uh, out of them. Well, uh, Stefan did just use that's true. The he did puzzle. double puzzle for to get it back. That's actually sadly true for for Tran here. Yep. So. Tran, if he does have a second Tapu Lele, yeah, he's got three in his deck. He could use Ultra Ball right now, go and grab the uh, the Tapu Lele, finding N. But he's actually going to turn off abilities now. And uh, this leaves him with no supporter for the turn. He's just going to go in with the Trash Lance Garbodor, knock out the other Trash Lance. And he just is really hoping that uh, Buzzwall isn't coming uh, over on Stefan's side. Stefan really doesn't want to see... Uh, Sledgehammer is starting to knock out these Zorarks after after all this, if he does go down to four prizes. There's that field blower again. Third field blower now played from Stefan. Uh, and you're right. Um, I think that at this point, because your Garboder is just doing exactly what it needs to be doing, um, you're, you're perfectly fine just trading Garboder hits. But that's that, that can only last so long, you know? Uh, eventually, you do need to see a Buzzwool come down for Tran and start knocking out these two prizes up. Uh, Pokemon like Zoroark, and if uh, if Stefan goes down to four prizes, this is going to be a perfect turn for him to do so. Yeah, if he had the option to knock out Tapu Lele uh, with a Guzma and a DCE, that would be very nice for him. It would mean he avoids Sledgehammer. He's not going to be knocked out by Trash Lance right now because not that many items have been played. Only six on his side. Uh, but it looks like he doesn't have that option available to him. It looks like yeah. he's just eyeing up N. Unfortunately for him, he doesn't... Uh, he doesn't have the Guzma uh, knockout available to him on the Tapu Lele, and that's exactly what Tran's trying to avoid. So Tran is going to be getting the good news soon as, well, there it is. That good news for Tran is uh, his, both his and Stefan's hands are going to be shuffled in, and they're both drawing five. Now, uh, Stefan is going to be going down to, uh, to four prizes by the end of this turn, unless he chooses boldly not to attack. Uh, but does that open up a... Like, I mean, of course, if Tran has Guzma with uh, with Buzzwell, then uh, that opens up a huge spot here for Tran to, to take the lead. But, I mean, still, you're you're facing down more Garboders than you've got available to you right now. Yeah. So there is an opening for Stefan to just run Tran out of uh, out of attackers unless Tran can continue to keep the swarm of, uh, of Trubbishes coming into play. Yeah, this actually gets pretty difficult with the Parallel City in play. It means that um, Tran won't have the option to use Tapu Lele to find that Guzma and... Uh, bench the buzzwall at the same time uh, there's just no bench face right now but he does have that field blower it's a, a pretty important resource for him because he can kind of uh, dictate um, when item when abilities are turned off and on all right rescue stretcher played by stefan finds another uh garboder here 
and he's actually going to be shuffling three Pokemon back into his deck. Yeah, I really like this. He knows that if he's able to use multiple Trash Lanch Garbodors in this game, then he's going to be able to come out on top. So just the, the more th that you leave available for yourself, the better, especially if you're going to be able to land those into a uh, Buzzwold GX maybe at the end of the game. Yeah, your Garbodor just is far and away going to be your best attacker uh, when Zorark is just such a liability, you know? Yeah. So if you can just consistently attack with Garbodors for the rest of the game, then you have a solid shot at winning. But if you can't, then um, then you do run the risk of just flat out being outprized because you're going to be attacking with GX Pokemon and your opponent can be attacking you through uh, for the rest of the game without any GX liabilities outside of the top of Lele that's sitting on the bench with 80 damage on it. Yep. Stefan wisely just keeps leaving himself with an option uh, of a draw supporter every turn that he doesn't have Field Blower, and I love seeing that. It just means that he's thinking a few turns ahead. All right, knockout onto the Carboder. Down to four prizes for Stefan. Does Tran get to take advantage of this? Does Tran have all the tools that he needs? I mean, he's going to need quite a bit, right? He's going to need a, a Floatstone or a Guzma. I mean, well, definitely a Guzma. Um, so he's going to need a, a Buzzwool. He's going to need a Guzma. He's going to need a, an Energy. That's, that's not a guaranteed given his hand. Yeah, his hand's actually relatively awkward. He's got cards like Rescue Stretcher, and I, I, he, he kind of wanted to shuffle in a few Trubbish of his own, but he might just need to go for singular pieces at this point. Well, there's that Rescue Stretcher. We will have to see what he, uh, what he cho chooses to go for. Looks like he is choosing to shuffle cards into his deck. Yeah, he's not afraid. All right. This is Tran's last stand. He needs a big turn here, an N. Well, not what you uh, hope for if you're Tran here when your opponent's at four prizes. Yeah, he he's looking for double colorless uh, Fury Belt, I guess, is, is a one way to, to knock out this Trash Lanch Garboder. Uh, he'd also like to turn off abilities. He'd like to do a lot of things, and it's really hard <laughs> with uh, his current board state. Yeah, you just see how uh, Stefan has access to those trades whenever there's no items on the Garboder and uh, on the Garbotox and Garboder, and that's just huge for him. That that gives uh, Stefan so many more cards to, to look at every turn as opposed to Tran, who's just playing a very fair deck when it comes to uh, the amount of cards you can see. Yep, he found Ultra Ball and Strong Energy, so if he wants to get an energy attachment, he's going to have to find a fighting Pokemon with that Ultra Ball. And... Uh, does he have uh, the float zone to retreat the top of Lele? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> so it looks like we're not seeing any attacks out of Tran this turn. Yeah, this uh, this will end with a, a Tapu Lele in the active spot, easily knocked out by a Trash Alliance, and then uh, Stefan is just going to be trying to eye up one more prize or uh, one more GX knockout uh, to win this game. That means Tran is going to try to avoid playing any GX Pokemon. We see him throwing away the Tapu Lele, finding that baby Buzzwole. He's going to try to make Stefan work for this. Unfortunately for him, Stefan won't have to work that hard. Uh, yeah. Really, Stefan's going to be going down to two prizes by the end of his turn. Abs like, that's assuredly. And that one Garboder is taking four prizes now after uh, Stefan knocks out that, um, that Tapu Lele. Just seeing another parallel city, too. This is going to lock uh, Tran out of even more potential uh, attackers. Carroll City, just such a strong stadium. It's used in so many decks, and for good reason. Well, <laughs> uh, over on Trans side, he's only got one card, so N isn't going to be doing very much for Stefan. He's just going to throw that away. You see the trades just really just racking up the amount of options that Stefan has available to him. Yeah, even in this situation, Stefan does not feel comfortable. He hasn't found the second Trash Lanch Garboder, and he hasn't found a Field Blower. So if you see him fidgeting over there, it's, it's for good reason. He, he's in a comfortable spot as far as the prize cards, but this could get weird if, uh, if there was a knockout to happen on this Trash Lanch alongside an N. Floatstone on Garboder, N, uh, Stefan to two with, uh, with a Floatstone on Garboder. This is what Trans deck's meant to do, you know? Yes, it can fall behind, but Tran plays for the long game. Garboder plays for the long game. And uh, once your opponent has no access to trade, then uh, an end of two can definitely prove to be exactly what the doctor ordered to 
bring Fran right back into this. But yeah. <laughs> at the same time, you're not really dealing too much damage here. Let's see if Tran finds that beast energy that he held onto in the opening part of the game, or that strong energy. Strong energy does it too. Okay. That's a knockout on that Garboder. Garboder finally goes down. Four prizes remaining for Tran, two for Stefan. Yep. And Stefan over there, he has Ultra Ball, so he's got guaranteed uh, Trash Lanch if he wants it. Oh, look at that. Even the Evo Soda. Evo Soda. What a, what a huge, huge uh, card for him. Finds that Garboder um, with Trash Lanch. Yep, that's going to mean that he gets to hold on to those two cards. They're actually pretty relevant, too. Double Colorless Energy could provide him a game-winning attack on a Trubbish in the following turn. So very nice to be able to hold on to those options there for him. Not bad here for Stefan as he's, as he's now down to one prize. I mean, we said that this is kind of what Garboder uh, from Tran wants to do. Uh, Tran's Garboder deck is definitely more of a control deck. Um, but still... Uh, you don't feel good when you're at one, uh, your opponent's at one prize and uh, still has a couple of cards in their hand. So you have to shuffle Trans, uh, Stefan's hand right back into the deck and bring him down to a one card hand. But how do you handle the, uh, the Garboder? Oh, well, I guess he did evolve into a Garboder of his own. Yeah, now he's just thinking uh, how many Pokemon can, uh, can Stefan draw off of this? A top deck Bridget might even be able to get him the rest of the way. Sure. He just needs to fill his bench so that Riot's beating can knock out this uh, Garboder. Well, Tran but how doesn't many really Pokemon have many does he have plus Also, he's uh he's been parallel city a few times. True, but uh, he uh, he also rescued Stretchered a couple of Pokemon back into his deck. That's true. He did shuffle in a few uh, Lele. Yeah. Okay, that is another prize taken here for Tran. Tran goes down to three, and more importantly, Stefan's main attacker down into the discard pile. Promotes Zorark into oh, the active got position. Field blower. He hits the field blower, which is which means we're going to be seeing a couple of trades here out of Stefan. The final field blower in his deck, and he finds a Sycamore off of that. Yeah, that's huge. He's a uh, he's, he's getting just a step closer to finding these cards he needs. Sycamore for seven new cards. Remember, Stefan just needs to fill his bench here in order for him to take game one. Oh, he found some Pokemon. Find some Pokemon, but does he find enough Pokemon? Seems to not have the amount of Pokemon he needs quite yet, but he's got to be awfully close. Yeah, he's going to go ahead and count right now to see if he has any basic Pokemon left in his deck. He's I know I saw an Ultra Ball in, in there. Hand, and he's got the Ultra Ball. So now he's just checking his counts. If he has any other basic Pokemon left in his deck, then Stefan will be able to close this game out right now. But he doesn't want to overextend his resources if he doesn't because he can uh, turn a winning position into a losing one. He's out of trades for the game or for the turn, which means he's got to conserve these resources as much as possible. Yeah, he, only going to go for this if he's pretty sure that he's got it. He gets into a risky spot if he plays too many items into the discard. He's actually going to fuel Trash Lanch to win the game. Oh, oh, no. oh no, he didn't have it. That must mean his last card in his prizes is that last basic Pokemon. You have to believe that he ha that he was just hoping it wasn't. And now a double colors does get attached onto the bench Zoroark, but I mean, granted, it's not like he's, it's not like he's now in a losing position, but he definitely could have just flat out won uh, on this turn if he would have had one more other, one more Pokemon uh, in his deck. So now Tran has one opening here. He's gonna need a lot. Like uh, you already have a, a Garbota that's, you can literally blow on it and uh, and it'll get knocked out. <laughs> so. So you can't attack with that anymore. You need to find a, a way to promote another Garboder and attack with that. Yeah, we could even see him using a, a Guzma and just trying to buy a little time if he knows that uh, Stefan is out of Guzmas. I d it just really depends where they're at. Oh. Looks like he had to scoop the cards up. Tran did not find any options uh, to, to be able to continue this game along. And even though Stefan missed on that final turn of his. He, he still had a winning position, and it was on Tran to kind of come back there, but the deck just didn't cooperate there for Tran, and uh, we see game one go to Stefan. Now, I want to ask you, Kyle, after we've seen this, uh, this first game play out the way it did, do you feel like Zorark is the favorite deck against this Buzzwell variant? 
I I think it's supposed to be. And he, he helps himself out by adding cards in like Latios that uh, really can start to change the way this game works. I just... The, we're not used to seeing a list like Trans List. He's got a really thick Garboder line, and then he also has uh, answers to Trash Lanch with other Trash Lanch uh, Garboders. We don't see that too often. So, just the fact that it turned into a very aggressive Trash Lanch mirror in the beginning instead of what Tran probably wanted, which was Buzzwolves uh, knocking out Zeruas, I think that's what kind of tilted the matchup. So, I think if Tran decides to go very aggressive with a Buzzwall, even maybe a Buzzwall GX in the beginning, before there are too many items in the discard pile and Trash Lanch can punish him, I think we could see a totally different game. That was uh, very well said. I actually completely agree with what you just said. I think um, Tran's game plan just never played out, you know? And uh, that that just meant Stefan had all the options available to him. Remember, he had a field blower pretty much every turn that he absolutely needed it, including on the final uh uh, on the final turn, and uh, that proved to be too much for Tran to handle. Now, Tran will be going first on, in this game, too, after he is down one game to nothing against Stefan. We see a couple of Zoro prize for Stefan, by the way. Yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty unfortunate. His hand looks like he doesn't have a Bridget either right now um, over on Stefan's side. Yeah. And Tran only plays one, and he found it immediately, so that's going to be pretty great for him. That was one thing he was lacking in the opening, was finding those Pokemon he wanted initially to start with, and bam, right off the start, he's going to start that Buzzwold GX like I was thinking. Yeah, uh, and by the way, Tran's prizes weren't too shabby either, uh, so uh, because of that, uh, that turn one Bridget, we're going to be seeing Tran's deck kind of operating on all cylinders, I believe, as opposed to Stefan, who, even if he finds a Bridget, is only going to be able to have a couple of Zoros in play by the end of this turn. Now, if these Zoros get targeted down, then we, uh, we might not be able to see very many trades throughout the game. Yep, uh, Forceful end here from, uh, from Stefan. No, uh, no Bridget for him on turn one. Yeah, he had the unit energy. He could have attached a Kartana uh, as a potential way to retreat or sneak in a blade if he wanted to. But uh, <laughs> he's actually uh, going to go ahead and hold on to that and hope to find a different energy card for the turn or maybe just a different Pokemon to attach to. All right, brand new hand of six for both of these players. That hand's good. Uh, he's He's got a way to find a Tapu Lele. He's got a, a Evo Soda so he can evolve into Zoroark. But all of this just goes straight away if he uh, if Tran on the other side finds Garbotoxin. Mysterious treasure. Discarding a Floatstone to dr find any Psychic or Dragon Pokemon in his deck and put it in his hand. Of course, only playing Psychic Pokemon, he only... Uh, usually goes after uh, Trubbish or um, Tapu Lele in this particular spot. In this spot, it seems pretty obvious that a Trubbish is going to be found here from Stefan. Oh, I think he's going for Tapu Lele. That hand, he's uh, he's actually very afraid of Garbotoxin, so I, I fully expect him to go Lele into Sycamore uh, and just hold the Sycamore here. Okay, actually, that's true. Um, yeah, you're you're absolutely right. He's he's been doing this play uh, all game one, and it's just it's a it's a very uh, dedicated strategy that you have to have because. If, if you aren't if you aren't being prepared for that Garbotoxin and it actually sticks, especially this early in the game, you can get run over. Yeah, especially because he had no supporters in hand, uh, relevant ones anyway. Yeah. For this particular position, so of course, playing the top of Lele right now before your abilities get shut off, finding a Sycamore, putting it in his hand, and um, you know, I mean, obviously not ideal. Lots of things that. Uh, he would have preferred to have done uh, on this turn, starting with a Bridget on turn one, but he's now in a position where he's at least potentially going to get a, a Zorg into play, and then, you know, on the following turns, you'll you'll start playing your Trubbishes and whatnot. Uh, Garboder, not exactly the best attacker in the early uh, turns of the game. Yeah, this this is a weird spot for Stefan. He's only got the one Zorua. Uh, his attachment for the turn, he's going to decide to go on the Kartana, and... He's got a few good cards to play, but this all falls apart as soon as a Guzma hits the board. So uh, on Tran's side, I uh, expect him to go pretty aggressive for that. And wow, speaking of aggressive, uh, the Blade. <laughs> I actually down. really didn't expect for him to use the Blade GX this turn. Uh, that's kind of surprising me, but at the same time, I, I get it. Uh, you don't want to just pass your turn without doing anything. He's got it. Guzma, big time Guzma on that Zora. Oh man, this could prove to be too much for Stefan's uh, deck to handles based on his prizes alone. Zora goes down and Stefan might still, well actually he's already had the, gotten the bad news when he went uh, wonder tagging so he knows that a couple of Zoros are in his prizes 
Yeah, I mean, he might have just said, hey, this is my best way to get his ruin to play is take the one and six and try to find it there. Also, uh, on Tran side, if you noticed in his hand, he had Ultra Ball, he had Floatstone. He had the potential to lock out abilities this turn if he wanted to. Chose not to, which uh, it, it's, it's actually not too terrible. He has a few energies in his hand that he thinks he can get some use out of, and he didn't want to go too aggressive. Yeah, plus, if you keep it, if you keep in mind, like, uh, your opponent's got Nozaru in play, right? Yeah, that so means there's, no Zorg. Yeah, there's no Zorg that, uh, that you fear trading away uh, irrelevant cards in their hand for, uh, for better ones. So no risk in, uh, in just kind of holding on to your resources right there and not overextending. Now, when you're, when you're training and you see your opponent bridge it here for double Trubbish and the single Zora, Azora, you, you kind of get, you kind of get the feeling that something's not going right here for Stefan. Yeah. And, uh, I can definitely expect to see that Zorua get targeted down on this following turn if Tran has the resources available for that. At the same time, though, this Tapu Lele is actually kind of dealing some relevant damage here based on the number of energy attached to Buzzwall. Yeah, and if you attack in and you don't knock out this Tapu Lele, Acerolo is going to punish him very, very hard on the following turn. So uh, Tran, he's going to have to take these prizes on the Tapu Lele and probably avoid uh, going after that Sarua this turn. I don't but even think he has the option to, to go after it. He, uh, but then you don't get the Sledgehammer either. Well, I mean, you never know that about that part. That is a powerful yeah. Buzzwall. <laughs> Okay, we'll see. Buzzwool, man. Triple strong energy on it. So Tran's mapping out his hand right now. He has Field Blower, uh, Mysterious Treasure, and Ultra Ball. And I don't think there's a way in which he can play the Ultra Ball and then also Mysterious Treasure for the Tapu Lele to find the supporter he wants. So uh, we could see this Mysterious Treasure just grab something that he doesn't want, and then he Ultra Balls for the Tapu Lele if he wants to thin out by one card. He may also just value the Ultra Ball and the energy and uh, go for Tapu Lele N right now. I could see valuing the, uh, the energy for sure, and of course the Ultra Ball too. Yeah, I mean, but, finding that Ultra Ball again, he could go and grab Garbotox. And instead, this is a pretty aggressive approach, too. He's got the, the Sycamore, and he can go find it uh, uh, right now. Okay. So Sycamore going to be drawing seven new cards here for Tran. I mean, we see a very powerful Buzzwool, but that's pretty much all Tran's... Uh, all of uh, Tran's eggs are in that Buzzwool basket. Also, uh, important to note here... Well, obviously looking for the Garbotoxin, but on Stefan's side, when he decided to use Blade, that actually really threw off Sledgehammer. Uh, because now if he takes the knockout on this Buzzwool GX in the following turn, uh, that puts him down to three prizes and no Sledgehammer ever happens. So uh, Tran's strategy of going with an opening GX Pokemon and having that knocked out to bring him down to four prizes is completely out the window. All right, Tran discarding here for Ultra Ball. Ultra Ball probably finding... Garbotox and Garboder. There it is. Garbotox and Garboder coming down. Floatstone already attached. So Garbotox Garbotoxin is online. I mean, this is exactly what he wants. Uh, I mean, Stefan sitting on a pretty low hand. Isn't really able to do too much. And he's, he's still got to find a way to answer this buzzwell. We don't see a direct counter right now on board. Down goes Tapu Lele as Tran does go down to three prizes. Stefan still at five. Stefan promotes uh, Kartana. <laughs> okay, well, how many items are in? Uh... Stefan has played three and Tran's played Tran five. five. Okay. Yeah. So five puts him at 100, uh, so he's 10 short right now. And uh, Sycamore is going to come down. Built in short. Yeah, double colorless and a Pokemon would do it right now. Uh, well, we see Choice Band and uh, Unit Energy. That'll also do that. Okay. Yeah, we do see that Choice Band. That Choice Band, very important here. Getting uh, Garboder pa past the, the damage threshold. Double checking the number of items, I'm sure. Making sure these die pips are correct. Yeah, but, just, yeah. 
uh, because of that uh, because of that toy span and that unit energy, we will be able to see a knockout here onto this Garboder, which means Stefan will be going down to three prizes, avoiding that sledgehammer altogether, and um, more importantly, getting rid of all the energy in, uh, uh, on the field here for Tran. Yep, and since uh, Stefan has already passed that three item count, he feels comfortable playing down to five now. It's it's he knows that he already gets knocked out by another trash lanch Garboder. So if he was at two, uh, we could have seen him play a little more safe and not go for this second trash lanch. But it's just going to go ahead and get that down now. It's nice to have it on board in case uh, Garbotoxin sticks for a little longer than you wanted. Yeah, there's certain thresholds you don't want to hit whenever you're or you want to avoid hitting for as long as possible when you're playing against trash lanch. Uh, obviously, the first one was three because of the weakness. But then after that, like your next threshold is. 10. 10. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good old 3 and 10. Look <laughs> out. <laughs> All right. Garbo, uh, Garboder does trash lanch, knocking out that Buzzwell. Will Tran re uh, reply with a trash lanch of his own? And will he find more Trubbish to go with that? Well, he's got a Garboder, just not the right one. <laughs> oh, man. Also has that Sledgehammer Buzzwell in his hand, but because of the blade it's thrown off, it's not going to be nearly as effective for him. Look, he's not even going to play it. the Sycamore. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't even want it. I mean, yeah, all of his... It seems like Stefan's just worked around Tran's game plan for the entire match, you know, game one and game two. And, uh, and Tran's just been in just uncomfortable position after uncomfortable position. There's another Trubbish, though. Very important card. Now, the only, the main card he's uh, missing is, of course, Garbota, which just gets uh, played as as I speak. And now we do have a Trash Lanch available for Tran. So Tran is going to be back in it. Uh, matter of fact, he's going to go down to two prizes before Stefan does. But he's going to have to find the final two prizes, and uh, it's not exactly easy. Yeah, I love that he's thinking ahead. He's already playing down these Trubbishes. It's nice to thin out his hand as much as he can. And uh, he's leaving it open so that just Rescue Stretcher is going to be able to find him some more attackers. Oh, wow. Stefan's hand. He's holding on to double puzzle. This turn could be pretty nutty. Now, Stefan's going to need... Uh, he's probably going to want a Field Blower, right? Uh, yeah, of course, Field Blower to get rid of Garbo Tox and be able to... Well, I guess he only has one trade available to him, so maybe it's not as relevant. Yeah, Dork, most importantly, he uh, he wants to be able to fill his bench and take the knockout with his Zorark. It's, it would feel pretty bad if he uh, had to use puzzles to go and find basic Pokemon. Just threw a double colors, too. He definitely was going to need that, too. Yeah. And he's already holding the end, and that's his uh, planned supporter for the turn. What are these puzzle of time's going to find? It looks... I mean, I personally think that uh, finding a field blower is very important for the late game strategy, but at the same time, you want to, uh, of course, keep the, uh, the number of Trubbishes and, uh, uh, on your field uh, as high as possible. And you can argue for a Zerua, too, you know? Yeah, it looks like he um, he's actually going to shuffle in one of these unit energies off of the end and uh, have that available to him later for Trash Lanch to potentially win him the game. Uh, I, don't, I don't mind that play either. He had a Zeru in his hand, which explains why he didn't find it either in uh, uh, from his discard pile. And, of course, there's that end shuffling in that unit energy, like you said. Uh, three new cards for uh, for Stefan, two new for, for Tran, but... Oh, man. Um, Tran seems to be in okay shape here. Yeah, this is actually yeah. just isn't too bad for Tran. If he finds something like double colorless energy, he could just start attacking with top of Lele or something. Just find anyone to, to start doing some damage and put some pressure on. And he drew into some relatively okay cards. Not not perfect, but if he finds energy, he can get going. Tran draws his third card. Uh, let's see. Parallel City just immediately cuts Zork's attack by 40, and then he's got the N. Just needs a, a Pokemon to attack with. He's only got five items in the discard pile, so... That means he doesn't really have to worry about Trash Lance coming in and knocking out a Tapu Lele, especially when it has that Fighting Fury belt attached, 210 hit points. You know, that is asking for quite a bit off of a two-card end, though. Needs a Pokemon to attack with and needs energy to attack with it. So it needs to be perfect, perfect off of this two-card end. Just attack with Lele. It's fine. <laughs> Just get a double colorless. Easy game. All right. Well, not, not as easy not as Not fine. Now so, it's hard. 
So, okay, so Tran did need uh, quite a bit of help from his deck, and he did not receive it. So now it's Stefan who could... Um, How do you feel about passing right here with the, the Garboder? Um, I, I feel like he could have just taken that hit. <laughs> It, he, your opponent would have to have a field blower for the parallel city, and then also the Pokemon to go with it in order to knock you out. Two, yeah, I'll off a two card off end. Of, off of, yeah, I, I feel like you could just take that 80 damage and feel fine. Instead, he's going to give Stefan a prize card here, drop him down to one. It'd be a great idea if you already had the end in hand, but instead, Sycamore is going to be his choice. All right, Sycamore drawing seven cards here for Tran. Tran is going to need a series of very fortunate events here for for him to get a the victory in this game he found uh he found buzzwall he found a fighting fury belt he has the energy to attach to the buzzwall if he wants to use that he's got double colorless for the lele so really has all the options he wants uh gonna go with trash lanch as his main attacker uh i mean you're two hit KOing the zorg did he not have a double colorless in hand and uh stefan's down to one prize too using your yeah. one prize attacker here can get tricky that that uh, Stefan just needs a unit energy to, to win the game. Okay, well, Stefan, will he find the unit energy he needs? Six, one, 20, minus. Remember, if he doesn't find unit energy, he's actually still got quite a few other uh, cards that can do similar things to bring him right back into this. It plays another Zoroark, so now if he finds a field blower, he'll be able to trade twice. Oh, look, he's, he's probably going to be stuck off this Enhance Hammer. He'll have to... Find a way to get out of the active spot here, too. Oh, geez. And Hands Hammer does get rid of that rainbow energy. Now, granted. Okay. So, Zorak retreats, uh, promotes the Zorak with no damage on it, and nearly knocks out this Garboder. What is Tran going to do to get out of this one? A Guzma would be huge here for him. And an energy. Well, uh, an energy that lets Garboder attack. Now it looks like he has the float stone in his hand, so he can get out of the active spot. Now he just has to choose his attacker, probably going to be Tapu Lele. Tapu Lele. Yeah. With that said, I mean, it seems like it's Guzma or Bust for Stefan now, too. Yeah. So it was... a uh, Guzma would have won it for Tran, uh, but uh, because he didn't have... Gu oh... I All like right. this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Stefan was Stephon holding down to on to the, the floatstone in order to have the Guzma option as a as a game winner. And uh, now that's gone. Stefan's just going to have two potential cards to get out of this. He's going to need to draw um, basically uh, like a, a field blower and a, obviously a dead card. Yeah. Or he's going to need to find uh, floatstone with Guzma in, off of two cards that he's going to have access to. Wow, and look at that. Uh, Tran was able to find the rainbow energy, so Trash Lanch is back online for him in the following turn. Is All that right. Field Blower? There's a Field Blower, <laughs> which means that there is definitely a chance here. Field Blower was the exact card Stefan was going to need in order to keep this game going. Unbelievable. And, of course, he's going to be discarding his last card uh, to trade, getting himself two new cards. Remember, he still doesn't have the win yet. He's going to need to have a, hit a, uh, a Guzma. Well, with uh, with eight uh, items oh, in the discard yeah, pile, right. just unit energy yeah, could unit do it too. Yeah, unit energy or Guzma, one of the two. But that field bar was crucial. Yes, absolutely. And you get rid of the Fury Belt, right? Yeah, I think you get rid of the Fury Belt on the on the active Lele. Yeah. He's uh he's wondering if uh, leaving if taking the Parallel City would give him better options for a Tapu Lele top deck. He's got one in the discard pile, so he might actually go with the Parallel City. And I, I, I don't mind this also. This means that top deck Tapu Lele turns into Guzma for uh, okay. for a win also. Well, uh, he needs a way to get out so of the active, too. Finds a Guzma, I think. But he needs energy. Yeah. And this is awkward for him, too. He found Puzzle of Time. Uh, one, two, I think just two pieces of Puzzle of Time in there. So I if you throw away a Puzzle piece and you get the other one, that's I think devastating. you still throw away the puzzle piece, though. Yeah, there it is. Throws away the puzzle piece. Finds two Pokemon. Does not find what it needs, actually. Yeah, he's just an energy short. Yeah, the double trade. He got the field bar. Oh, man, he found the Guzma off one of the trades, but he still did not find that last piece of the puzzle. No pun intended. <laughs> oh, man, Stefan just... So, so close to being able to close this match out, out. And it seems like he's going to be forced to pass the Tran. And Tran, uh, well, yeah, and Tran's going to take this. Uh, I believe you just kind of retreat here and uh, promote a uh, Trubbish. 
He could also use the Guzma and send up something like the other Garbotoxin Garbodor, try to buy a turn and, sure. and, and leave the Trubbish active. He could actually even leave uh, the uh, Trash Alanche active, and if Tran doesn't have a way to get out of the active spot, he can just try again uh, for the unit energy or the or the Guzma. Now, Buzzwall. Okay, so this means that no Floatstone is going to be able to to save him from here. Yeah, this I like is, it. This yeah, I like it a lot. So Stefan still finds a way to keep himself in this game, finding ways to just keep extending this game. Pad. Pal pad, uh, not. <laughs> He just wishes that was well, the Guzma. Okay. <laughs> Palpad finding uh, probably a... Some Guzmas. <laughs> yeah, probably a couple of Guzmas there. Um, geez, man. Oh, geez. Tran now. I mean, of course, they both. it seems like both players have made ideal plays when it comes to, you know, their supporter choices and whatnot. Um, but, I mean, Stepan is just extending this game as, mo as much as he can it seems like yeah is there uh, any way that Tran survives five more cards exactly there's there's gonna be uh no more uh garbotoxin so now stefan is just gonna be drawing from uh double trade again i mean granted he no longer has guzma in hand but i mean come on <laughs> yeah five cards <laughs> i like those chances this one's coming down to the wire but it seems like stefan is uh, is favored here to come out with a victory. Yeah, if he has a Guzma in his deck, Tapu Lele is a way for him to win. Unit energy is a way for him to win, just attacking immediately. So. All right. End drawn for Stefan. Likely to see a couple of trades immediately, see what kind of options he's got available to him. All right, trade number one. Finds nothing yet. Still fishing. Trading away his Zorak probably again. All right, trade number two. Finds a double colorless energy. Not the one he needed. Yeah. Oh, man. Do you go for an N here? I think he plays as many cards as he can and goes uh, Cynthia looking for the unit energy that he shuffled back. Uh, I mean, he can should, he play he, any cards though? He can evolve uh, the back Trubbish into Garbo, uh, the other oh, sure. Garbutter. So that's one card that he's potentially missing. Okay. Well, Cynthia draws six new cards. Now, now he's just looking for that unit. Unit energy or bust right now. Oh, Three he finds cards, the... Four. Okay, there we there go. Is. There's that <laughs> unit energy. Big time hit here for Stefan as he does find exactly what it needs after drawing through over half his deck eventually um i mean stefan had to work really hard to get this victory but he did indeed find uh the final piece of the puzzle that he was looking for and he does take this game two games to nothing against tran win and i mean stefan played this uh, matchup excellently despite the fact that i'm sure that he's not very experienced against it i'd be very surprised if he was